to say, let's pick five people. Um, they're going to go over the homework tomorrow. Is the order in which I select those five people going to be important to you? It's just who those five people are, right? But now, if I say, let's pick five people that are going to go over homework tomorrow, and each one is going to be assigned a specific problem. Now is the order important? Yes, because depending on whether you go first or last, that could be a different problem, right? So, <clears throat> for example, one, let's just kind of read through these together, all right? We're not solving right now. We're just kind of addressing, is this going to be a problem where the order makes a difference, or does the order not matter, okay? So first problem. We have six students running for student government. Uh, one is going to be a president. One is a vice president. One is treasurer. The student with the greatest number of votes becomes the president, the second highest, and so on. Okay, you don't even have to finish reading this. Is the order in which these students are selected important? Yes. And it's not necessarily the order, but the fact that there are positions assigned, right? Positions are assigned. That's going to make this a combinations, or I'm sorry, a permutations problem. Okay? So if it's an if it's a problem where the order matters, or there are specific positions or specific roles assigned to each person, that's going to be a permutation. Okay, part B. Six people are on a board. A three-person committee is needed. How many committees can we make? We'll answer that later. But does it matter how the three people are chosen here? So this one is order not important, it's just a matter of uh, who is on the committee, not necessarily who got chosen first, second, or third. <clears throat> so this is going to be a combinations problem. Why don't you try the, the last three, the last three on your own. Here. So read through each scenario and try to determine, will the order make a difference or not? Again, we're not answering the question. We're just determining should the order matter or not. All right, so for the first problem, we're making a bowl of ice cream. You're putting three scoops in there. One of, uh, one, each scoop is a different flavor. Does the order in which the scoops are put in there make a difference? No. So this is a combinations problem. I don't know what context this is, but 200 free videos, let's say movies or something. And you got to choose, or I'm sorry, I said that wrong. There's a total of 200 movies. You got to pick six of them to see for free. How many ways can you pick the six movies? Do we care about order here? No. So this is another combinations problem. Here we got a race, 50 runners. How many ways can the first three finishers come in? Does this one have an order, uh, does order matter here? No. 
Yes. Yes. So this is a permutations problem. Okay. <clears throat> so NPR we've been using for permutations. N represents the total. R represents how many of those items are being rearranged. If we see NCR, it's kind of the same, uh, same thing, except now it's talking about a combination. N is still the total. R is still the number of items or people or whatever being chosen for that group. Does that make sense as far as notation goes? So rather than do this, Okay, I, I want to actually give you more time in class to work. I still need to talk to some people, but here's what's going to happen. A, B, C, and D. And we are making permutations of these four letters taken three at a time. Okay, the whole point of this problem is that you're going to write out for example, A, B, C, and then also A, C, B. You could also do B, D, and then D, B. These are all different orders, right? And we can play that game and do every single one. The question is, though, these is the same combination of letters, correct? Because we have A, B, and C in this group, and we also have A, B, and C in this group. Order is different, but it's the same group, essentially. Does that make sense? And then over here, if, if I start playing that game, it'll be similar. If I do B, A, C, or B, C, A, well, I've already talked about those. That These are really the same group as the first group in here. Do you guys see what I'm saying? The point of this, if you list them all out, is that there's only going to be four different groupings. 24 different orders, but four different groupings. Does that make sense? And now here's the formula for a combination. Here's how we figure it out. This formula, n is the total, and r is the number being chosen or selected. Okay. So if we actually applied the scenario here, um, if I did 4C3 and did the formula, it would be 4 factorial divided by n minus r, which is going to be 4 minus 3 factorial, and then r factorial, which is 3 factorial. So this essentially becomes 4 factorial over 1 factorial times 3 factorial. What is 1 factorial? And we've seen these already, right? 4 factorial on top, 3 factorial on the bottom. What's going to be left? 4. Because it's 4, 3, 2, 1 on top, 3, 2, 1 on the bottom. Those cancel, right? So do you guys see where this 4 is coming from? Okay. This denominator, this dividing by 3 factorial represents dividing out all those groupings that were the same that we don't want to count extra times, OK? On the calculator, this works the same way. You would just, instead of doing 4P3, which is how we're going to get 24, you do 4C3, and now we get a slightly different answer, OK? Let's do example 2A together. <clears throat> so we're making a three-person committee. And it looks like there's a total of eight people that, that we can choose from. Will the order matter here? The order in which the committee is chosen, does it matter here? No, there's nothing about you know certain people being certain positions, like a president, or there's nothing like that. So this is just going to be how many total? Eight people. And then how many are we choosing? Three. So this is all you would do. So either using the formula or your calculator. Let's go ahead and figure this out. 
And the way you would read this, by the way, is eight choose three, which kind of makes sense because it's really saying we have eight total people and we're choosing three of them. What is it? 56. Okay. Let's try one more. Seven different animals. And you volunteer to pet sit three out of those seven. Sounds like a fun time, actually. How does the order matter in which you choose the pets? No. It's just really, it's all we care about is what three pets are going to be making a mess in our, in, our, <laughs> in our place, right? So this would be how many total? Seven. <laughs> choose three. What is that going to be? 35. Okay. <laughs> Any questions on that? Okay. The next several problems, I want you to take two minutes, maybe four minutes, and just make sure that we can get these answers correct. We'll go over them in five minutes.